Hello everyone, this is David Biedel 23 and welcome to the Mandragon's Cave. Today we are going to be talking about Caribou from One Piece. This is the one of the current rookies that we find after the time skip that he has the swamp swamp fruit. It's like a swamp person. Uh, there is a cover story about him as well, and there is this um, uh, this storyline with him being in Wano as well, and dragging him to Gyojin Island, and you know a little bit of connection with with Luffy and the crew. Okay, so let's do. I wanna do. Yeah, like swamp, like shape like this irregular and then we will make as he always does this attack like we will make him only here on top and something like this with the hands with these weird sleeves that are so long sleeves as well okay so why do I want to talk about Karibu today like such a random character uh, Karibu is in Egghead so in one we have him and he helps a little bit uh, Raizo to kind of uh, take all these uh, take all these uh, Denden Mushies and uh, that's, that's one of the legs and I'm gonna do the other one maybe here so he helps Raizo with this and then kind of, because he wants to escape, he kind of makes a little bit of peace with uh, Luffy's crews and everything. And we see him in, uh, we see him going to, to Egghead with them. And then he's like talking to Zorro, like, oh no, no, don't leave me here, don't leave me here, because this is a government island, I'll stop in the next island, in the next one. And Zorro is like, no, you just get out of here, I don't want to see you. And he leaves. Why is this? Uh, this is because there's a theory online that probably guys already seen it. Some of the this, some of the one piece YouTubers talk about it that Caribou is Mister Ten from Baroque Works, yes, and he is working for Crocodile this whole time as kind of traveling around the world, collecting information for him, etc, etc, etc. He works in pairs as well. He has his brother, this is Caribou and Coribou. And the other guys, this full crew that they have, this kind of white guys with a hat on top, similar to the brother, all of them are swamp copies. Uh, we see this as they float when we are going into Gyojin Island, going down Gyojin Island, and they attack Luffy and the crew. Then we see all of these guys kind of dying and floating like jellyfish up, like like if you throw a, a bunch of uh, of mud or something in the water, it will float a little bit and fall. No, so I think it is very very interesting character. It reminds me a lot to Boggy. Uh, it is a uh, crazy bad character but in a funny way like boogie and uh, and i love it so i think what this guy is doing if you pay attention he when nico robin was talking with neptune in Gyojin island about shirahoshi being the ancient weapon who was there hiding listening the whole conversation caribou what did he want it to do? To sell. I'm gonna make him even for the theory with a Denden Mushi here. This is just the pawn, the funny thing for the theory. So what what is telling me this? This random guy that has a full story cover story for himself, it is receiving information. This is telling me that he needs to tell it to someone. I think he says in one oh, oh this information because they are talking about Nika, they are talking about other ancient weapons, they're talking about Pluton in one being under one blah blah blah. 
and this guy is listening the whole time every single thing of it so I think uh, a lot of people when when he came out and, and this was happening they were oh he's gonna tell Kaido he's working for Kaido he's working for this no no he is definitely working for Crocodile and why because how he's neck head now and he's gonna get information about Saturn He's gonna get information about Nika, he's gonna get information maybe at the end of Egghead for Uranus. I think he's gonna be dragged to Elbaf as well with Luffy. He's gonna sneak into Luffy's ship again and he's gonna live there. And, uh, and yeah, so all of this info I think he's gonna tell to Crocodile. Let's make the hair like this a little bit crazy. He's gonna say all these things to Crocodile. And then this is the way that you connect Cross Guild to the main story. Because at the moment, uh, we know if you check my Crocodile video and my BB video, you know that Crocodile goal or interest is mainly ancient weapons since the very beginning. So I think he's gonna get them, the mechanical ones. Please check out my videos about ancient weapons, so you understand why I talk about mechanical weapons. And and then we are gonna have. Uh, this guy giving the information, helping him to achieve his, his, his dream of utopia and having these weapons. And connecting Boogie and Mihawk and the rest to, to this kind of end of the story, okay? Let's check on the pen. So, I think it is very important to... There's some sketches, this is very important info from one of the... SBS at the end of the manga books. I think that's one of the SBS with some sketches or early sketches of Mr. Ten. And he looks the face design for him is really similar to Caribou. And uh, as I always say, the beginning of One Piece, the beginning of One Piece is what. Uh, what we need to take as a guide for the end of the story and we know that uh, Crocodile was since there, sin there since the very beginning he's gonna be at the end of the story and then we're gonna have some of his characters being around him as well that's why I think the kind of way of doing the things with Cross Guild that's why He's kind of connecting Boogie, Mihawk and everything together. So he can actually expand a little bit more on that and show us info and things that maybe he wanted to do separate, but now, because he wants to finish the story soon, uh, he will go for this, uh, this kind of uh, idea. So let's make it funny. I like him funny like this. He has the eyes. Like crazy eyes, like uh, like emu, like mihawk, these kind of lines around it, and uh, yeah, I really like it. And then the face is kind of pointy, like a clown as well. And it has like a half moon here as a little goaty beard. So we know that this guy Caribou. He's been one of the rookies after the gap, two years, two years time skip and everything. We know as well that uh, we know as well that uh, he has info about Shirahoshi, he has info about uh, Pluton, he has info about Luffy, Nika, he has info about everything. And uh, if we think about one person who needs this info, that's Boogie's group, that's Crocodile's group. So it will make sense to connect the storyline if uh, if you make him being a maybe it doesn't need to be like a guy working for him maybe he's just selling the info that will work for me as well just selling the info okay let's paint this side like this and then the head is a little bit more it has a little bit more of shape like this. Oda loves 
to use these funny characters and these weird characters for most of the time very important purposes so unconsciously this guy is going to be one of those that uh, will kind of decide the fate of the world because because Oda really likes to work in, in funny characters so at the moment I don't see any other logical explanation for Caribou if it is not about going with Crosshield and passing all the info to Crocodile related to the ancient weapons that he needs. We've seen him that he is powerless even against Frankie, that Frankie is not a hacky user so far that we know. And Frankie is able to lock him in this barrel and everything. But I don't see him a fighting character. But he has a lot of info from this uh, every single one of the New World sagas relating Luffy. He has info that can pass and can be very useful for Crocodile. I don't see Crocodile as Luffy's enemy anymore after the help that he he had in in Impel Down, in Marine Fort, etc. And I don't see them as enemies, but yes kind of rivals to achieve the One Piece, to fight the government and all these things. For, for this, yes. I don't think it's a character that is gonna kind of make Luffy and the crew be in an uncomfortable opin uh, position or in a bad position because uh, I think it's involving Crocodile. It is gonna be more about uh, Info, info that uh, uh, he needs to have. So look, I'm gonna do, look, I'm gonna even do this, then then mushy, <laughs> like this. If you guys know what I mean, I'm gonna do it like this, like he is talking to crocodile. It's gonna be like this, and it's gonna make it even smoking like this. <laughs> That's just a funny thing to do there. With this kind of super cool cape, mafia cape that the crocodile wears. So, yeah, guys, tell me what you think in the in the, in the comments about Caribou and about uh, his path. Uh, Oda always gives, apart from uh, that mini story with uh, Hedatsu, one of NL's one of NL's priests. Every single time that we've seen a mini story has something to do with the uh, with the main story and uh, Caribou has one very important that he travels the world, he meets some kind of revolutionary people, Gaburu. I think it was called Gaburu the guy that the old woman thinks that he is the son, he is Gaburu, and uh, etc. etc. So it is very funny, very funny character, uh, it has a lot of info. Uh, it reminds me of Boggy, it reminds me of Foxy, it reminds me this kind of... But at the same time he's ruthless and he's bad. We've seen him killing the fake Sanji in, in Shabondi, like making a ball around, a, a swamp ball around his head until he can't breathe. So that means that he's bad. And uh, someone that can do something like that, it must be working with or working for someone really bad like Crocodile I think like Crocodile and he, at, on his beginnings with uh, Baroque works and everything was about that was about assassination and world dominion so it will make sense that someone acting like him <clears throat> in such a crazy way it's uh, it's connected to there's a little bit of some beer there is connected to, to Crocodile. Uh, I can't I can't wait to see that. That that is actually one of my favorite things. One of one of the things in my list as a favorite that I'm waiting to happen. Like to see what is Caribou, Caribou gonna do, to who is gonna send the info, and when they reveal that that's Crocodile, I'm gonna be very happy. That's gonna be really fun, really nice, really one piece. Let's say very one piece. Uh, I can't can't wait to see that. And let's see this hair. 
this crazy hair. I'm gonna make, I don't think I wanna make anything here, to be honest, but I'm gonna just try to So the legs and then we will mark more or less what is gonna be the the swamp space when we open like this. Yeah, okay. The power I don't think he's connected to Blackbeard uh, because this power that he has of swamp and being able to swallow things and keep them stored there like the marmaids that he kidnaps that they, later he release he releases in in Eugen Island and they are kind of they stay there and um, latent they are there but not dead and uh, so he can store things in this swamp like we see this in Wano as well when he actually manages to to take plenty plenty of food to escape and then Luffy falls from Wano and the whole thing with Momo happens and Caribou happens to be there as well and then Caribou's like oh no way I'm gonna have to give you all my food because you know I want you to win so I can escape from here so he actually feeds Luffy and Luffy's like oh actually you're a good guy so kind of by helping him to recover energy, uh, it's helping the, the plot of the story, like Poggy done many times. Uh, even being a bad character, uh, he did that. So, obviously for his own survival, but the power of storing things inside him, it reminds me to when Blackbeard swallows the full Banaro Island and then explodes and throws everything away. He does this in Marineford a little bit as well. And that power being so similar, I don't think Oda will put two guys in the same crew or in the same vicinity or connection to, to do this. So, uh, let's do this. Okay, so being said, my idea, my concept for uh, for Caribou being explained more or less to whom he is connected to Crocodile, to Cross Guild, to information, to you know selling info to the pe person who can pay the best. In this case, Crocodile will be this person, and I want to say something important regarding regarding Caribou. Let's see, let's do this next one second first. Uh, okay. Like this. Because I want to create this kind of double layer, like there's actually a, a thickness there and, and a power there. So, uh, I talked about Vegapunk the other day in one of the videos, and I'm talking about Vegapunk being a, a multiple character. And when we have multiple characters, that means they are gonna be in different places at the same time. Uh, please check out my Vegapunk video so you can understand a little bit better why I'm saying this. But basically, what if, what if, I think Kuma is gonna show up, he's uh, gonna separate maybe some of the people, I think he's gonna send a Vegapunk with uh, with Dragon, I think Lily is gonna go with Luffy to fix Frankie because Frankie is gonna be broken after this. Uh, please check my Frankie video about the updates as well. Uh, if you do these things, and uh, maybe someone, because Jork, if Jork doesn't die in Egghead, I think him she may end up escaping with Blackbeard and, and giving him this Vegapunk. Uh, upgrade that he needs uh, regarding weapons and things and she's a bad character so imagine if by any chance Caribou before escaping from Egghead manages to kidnap another of the Vegapunks and with all the info that he has about the ancient weapons with all the info that he has about Nika with all the info that he has about Saturn 
and Vegapunk. He shows up to, to Crocodile, he gives him all the info about the ancient weapons, about all the things that I've been saying, and on top of that, he brings one Vegapunk, one Vegapunk that they can squeeze to to have all the info and all the weapons that they need, and, and, and uh, yeah. Imagine how crazy that would be. So, I think Caribou is set up for greatness in in this saga. And funnily enough, I think he will kind of kidnap one of the Vegapunks, probably one of the robots that we actually don't... Let's say we don't care much about them. One of these guys. And... Uh, how nice it would be to give this kind of people cross guild that they are not in Egghead. They are basically the only people not in Egghead that we uh, care about. Because we are going to have Naokuma, that uh, he's revolutionary. We are going to have Luffy, etc. We're going to have Blackbeard. We had info about rocks. We had info about Aogiji, about the Marines. Everyone is there but cross guild. So how 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 is the 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 funny and the nice way to involve them with this, with Caribou, with kidnapping a Vegapunk, with giving Crocodile one Vegapunk plus uh, plus info about the ancient weapons, plus info about the government, so he can actually fight up against the government as well. Because Crocodile is gonna Crocodile is gonna go crazy against the Gorusei 100%. Because we see this massive resentment that he has in Marineford, like kind of arguing with black with white beard and uh, don't let them manipulate you this and that I don't believe this and this so I talk about all of these things in, in my crocodile video and probably I will talk more in, in more crocodile videos that I may do but having this Mr. Ten looking guy going into Going into the story with Crocodile and the Cross Guild, it can be very beneficial for the storytelling, for the world building in this case, and for uh, Crocodile's uh, go end goal. And let's say try to World Dominion or Pirate King or this uh, defeating some of the Gorusei or defeating the, the Order because he's been betrayed, etc. 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 So it can be very very interesting I can't, I can't wait to see to be honest let's paint the face this is gonna be very very brown character because most of the things with him are brown but we are gonna use another tone and like we used as well with Akainu so we can differentiate a little bit this I don't wanna add more tones just a couple of lines to the to this long shirt that he has but we can do here yes we can do we can do a little bit like this as i said before the only other character that we don't know anything and had a, a mini story is Hedatsu, one of nl's priests the one with the funny hair, similar hair to him. And if you check my Uranus video, I think he's going to be connected to Uranus, Pluton, and the ancient weapons in some way as well. So please check that out and so you can understand. But if you realize all the other characters that we always have, they have somehow a connection. The mini stories have somehow a connection with, with the main plot. And Oda has been playing with that very beautiful because he's kind of a he's kind of a second chapter that he's giving is giving to you every now and then. He's giving you another story in between the lines, and and I love that when a storyteller comes in place. And with this whole revolutionary things uh, that they were talking about with Caribou, it is really funny and how he evolved from being a assassin and a murderer in Shabondi. To be this kind of lost, funny character that is speaking information, funny that we don't know what he's gonna do, but at the same time, he's gonna have strong repercussions for the One Piece world. I think his actions. I think he's not left to randomness, 
that he is a rookie with at the point at that point I think he's around 220 or 250 million rewards that's that's basically I think that's more than Luffy had when two years ago I think I think if, if I'm correct but uh, no it's a little bit less I think Luffy was in 300 and a kid was in 315 but that's what uh, Drake had and that's what Law had 200 250 and it is very very interesting so let's add a little bit of gray tone because the shirt is actually gray this swamp. But I'm not gonna do anything inside, inside the swamp or swallowing, or maybe we do at the end. I don't know. But uh, as I said, I can't. I can't wait for Caribou to kind of be revealed, be revealed the the, the purpose of, of of his presence in in all these uh, new world sagas, because he's been everywhere. Uh, it is not gonna be a threat as, as uh, let's say, as a fight, because a fight, because we already seen Frankie putting him in, in the barrel, Zoro basically ignoring him totally, like, uh, uh, get out of here, I don't wanna see you, and he's been joking in the sunny, and all these things. So, let's paint his eyes in green, because that's a very, very sign as well. Disney always use green, this kind of green, to depict the bad guy. And Caribou's eyes being this green, disgusting green, and the hair like this and everything, it's telling me that really bad things are really bad things are being plot uh, because of him here. So yeah, let's add a little bit more of green. And it comes with this cape, this kind of cloak that he has here. Yeah, like this. Yeah, green, green, green. And the trousers were painted in a second as well with a little bit of red. It's wearing red trousers. We need to add some black. I want to paint a little bit more the hair. Some shadows here on the face. Yeah, and this. Okay. It's looking good. I'm happy with this one. It's looking good. And I think we kind of captured the idea of the of the character with the swamp fruit and uh, Once he manages to call, I don't think he's gonna call. I think he's gonna show up in Cross Guild very, in a very, very epic way, and he's kind of gonna say crocodile. I, I think he's even gonna call him Mister Zero. Still, I think the only ones that they are loyal to him still are Mister One, as we've seen that he's still with him, and this guy, and he's gonna show up and he's gonna say Mister Zero. Uh, I've been investigating about the ancient weapons as you asked me to do uh, some time ago and here is the info I collected. That's gonna break the internet. <laughs> it's gonna be very crazy because I don't think people is kind of expecting this. Some people is talking about being with Crocodile but I don't think people is expecting the magnitude of, uh, of, uh, of a shock that this is gonna be for uh, for the plot and for the storyline, to be honest. Because the info that he has is very heavy and, and as well, he's, uh, it's been confirmed confirmed by Yoda that he didn't actually listen to this, but if you go back in time some episodes ago, when Luffy is talking about his dreams in the Sunny, that he's hidden there in a the barrel, uh, people was like, oh, wait a minute, are you telling me that Caribou knows the real dream, the truth of the of, of behind the, the dream of Luffy that everyone is waiting to see what's gonna be. He, Caribou knows. But Oda confirmed in SBS because he's been asked that um, no, that Caribou was packed 
uh, a little bit far and he couldn't actually hear that. But imagine, imagine that. Imagine having the info as well and giving it to Crocodile, giving it to Boogie and being able to use that uh, against Luffy. It is not gonna happen because it's been confirmed, but so crazy, imagine that. Let's paint this a little bit red because it is in theory. I painted black to the sim for the simplicity of the drawing, but it is actually uh, red. And we do the swamp. I don't want to do anything uh, in there because in theory he's empty. I think he's gonna kidnap one of the Vegapunks. He's gonna kidnap, uh, well, kidnap no, but he's gonna steal a lot of uh, loot from Egghead, be weapons, tools, uh, things that uh, Cross Guild can use. And he's gonna go back to Crocodile very, very packed with many, many things. Uh, I still think he will be dragged in the shadows a little bit more to. To, uh, to Elbaf as well, but uh, yeah, let's do a little bit of because this is kind of yellowish. It's gonna be packed as well and, and sent to Elbaf a little bit just for uh, for the sake of having info about uh, BB being uh, an ancient weapon as well. And being Uranus, please check out my video about Vivi and you will understand why I say this. So, yeah, I expect greatness from this silly character. And it's gonna happen very, very soon. Let's do this, just to make this pop a little bit. Very happy with this, with this drawing today. It ended up being really funny and, and really nice. Okay. Yeah. So please feel free to comment in the, in the, in the, down below in the comments. What's your opinion about Caribou? What do you think if I'm too crazy about this and nothing like this is going to happen? And yeah. This is David Biedel 23, David Biedel 23, you can say it as you want. And this is the Mandragon's Cave. Feel free to comment and share this with your friends to see what you think. And I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you very much. i see you in the next video. Bye.